and when it feels Mike, like it hasn't been that long, but but then at the right. same time, it can feel like it's been forever. Um, yeah, you you haven't played in five years, and when you look at the game, it feels like it's a completely different game. So many yeah. of these young, great quarterbacks doing a lot of the stuff that you were doing, but it's just more accepted. I know you've talked about it; it's, it, it's been just the theme for years. How much do you kind of wish you were playing in today's game? I mean, I think about it a lot in terms of the damage that I could have done. Um, you know passing the football, running the football. And now offenses are catered towards, you know, guy's skill set. So if you get a guy who's, uh, you know, 6'3", 225 pounds, but can move a little bit or, you know, 6'5", 235, you know, like a la Joe Barrow, who, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of him looking like a prototypical pocket passer, He's a guy that can move the chains with his legs. Like, it's accepted, you know, and, you know, offenses are geared towards making the quarterback better, making the team better, getting the most out of your quarterback and, you know, everything that he can do within the offense. And, you know, when I just look at what I could have did, you know, at the pace that I played, um, the skill set that I had, the vision that I had, um, and the, the competence that I had to run the offense, I mean, sky would have been the limit in terms of what I could have did. So, you know, I do look at the game now and I, and I get a little jealous. I'm not going to lie, you know, because these guys are, you know, doing what I did, but they're doing it at a faster pace. But, you know, it, it's made me such a, a big fan of the game. You know, Ryan, I can't not watch football on Sundays. Like, after I show on the kickoff, I'm watching NFL Sunday, Monday, Thursday, back to Sunday. I mean, it's just a revolving door for me. So I just love what the game is is presenting to the fans now and how coaches are taking advantage of, you know, guys' talents. Whenever you think about you first coming up, I mean, I don't I don't feel like anybody was was down on your running. It was just always kind of historically yeah. like, okay, there'll be the dual threat guy, but then eventually he stops running because it's just right. hard to stay healthy. But is it easier to stay healthy should we expect more of these dual threat guys because of the blocking because of the shorter passing because of just some yeah. of the rules like it is it just easier for us to accept that there's a longevity to running quarterbacks that maybe we never thought we could have before yeah i, I spoke to Kyler murray earlier today and uh the first thing that came to my mind was that he played all 16 games last year and you look at Kyler murray he's probably one of the most mobile quarterbacks in the game today and even though he's a rookie his durability was there. And the question that I always had to answer was, can he make it through 16 games? And I only did it once in my career. And the year I did it, I ran 4,000 yards. But prior to then, you know, out for two games, out for three games. So, you know, general managers and teams are going to look at that as, you know, we may need those games. So now we got to go out and get a great backup quarterback or mold a backup quarterback to fill the void where he's not, um, you know, on the field. You know, so, you know, I felt like it wasn't accepted because, you know, guys, you know, pocket passes was playing 16 games and they they was durable and they was Ironman. And I respected that, though. So, you know, the evolution of uh, the mobile quarterback has been, can he sustain? Can he be out there? And I think, you know, Cam Newton did a great job up until like year eight, you know, year nine, where it started to take a toll on him. But you get guys who, you know, understand what, you know, the physical side of it is all about. You know, they protect themselves better. You know, Russell Wilson, he slide and get down. I seen Lamar Jackson sliding and get down on a couple of occasions, even though he can get crazy, you know, sometimes. And that's what being mobile will do. Sometimes, like, you get so caught up in the game, you get so caught up in pleasing the fans and, you know, your bravado and what you can do, you, you can lose it a little bit, especially when you, you know, you're faster than the opposition. Um, so I like where the game is at today because these guys are protecting themselves better. You know, technology now, like God to a hamstring, he back in a week. I tell my hamstring, I'm back and forth. You know, so it just works yeah. out. But I like the way it's, it's evolving. So everybody knows this as far as the younger guys. And, and I've been around, I've seen it a few times where the reverence for you, like you yeah. are a hero to the generation of quarterbacks that has come up since then. Who's your number one guy then that's playing now? Who's the guy that's it's almost bugging you too much, but you still love him? Bro, I'm, I'm going to say this, man. Um, Like, Lamar holds a special place in my heart because I can look at Lamar and see 
everything that he's he's doing and, and say, I know why he did that, you know, so I can live vicariously through him. And, and I like, you know, I'm still a big Aaron Rodgers fan. I'm a big fan of Tom Brady. And, you know, Patrick Mahomes is probably going to be the GOAT next to the GOAT, you know, down the road. And, and, and he make the game look so easy. It's like, you know, I, I envy, but I love what he's doing, you know, because I get to watch it and I get to witness greatness. Um, but, you know, for some reason, man, Kyler Murray, and when I think about all the quarterbacks in the game today and, you know, the offensive skill set that he has, the coach that he has, and coming from a, you know, collegiate system, bringing it to the NFL. And I looked at his stats early and, you know, he was 60% completion percentage, 20 to 10 touchdown to interception ratio, rookie of the year. I mean, he did some great things and people aren't talking about him, but I've went back and did my research and looked at him and, and, and studied him close. And that kid gets it. He understands the game. He knows the game of football. And he's only 5'10", you know, at that. You know, he's Russell wilson And I, I I just, I love his game, man. I, I think I, you know, can make a prediction that this team is going to go very far. I just got D-Hop, Larry Fitz. Um, but but I, I'm a big fan of quarterback play all across the league. But, but Kyler Murray, it's something about him. Um, that that just sparked special to me. I think he got the it factor, and I, I can't wait to see it in year two, as he told me today that he's feeling more comfortable uh, within the offense. So that's not even just because you talk to him that you would say just watching him. This yeah. isn't like, hey, he's my favorite guy personality wise. Yeah. You're just saying that you see something with him that, wow, that I mean, look, the Mahomes thing just, goes without saying, but I guess right. that surprised me a little bit with yeah, Kyler. Yeah, and, and I like to look at quarterbacks who you know are just gems in their own right, guys who. Uh, are going to be difference makers like a, like a Teddy Bridgewater with the Carolina Panthers. Now I think it's just, it's good reason that he's in that offense and he's with that team. Uh, he, he's a great fit. So with Kyle, it wasn't anything that um, really stood out. I just thought about, you know, the growth and how hard it is to play as a rookie and what you have to endure in 16 games and, you know, guys going coming in and out. He took 40, he got sacked 46 times last year, but kept getting up and kept grinding. I'm like, it's something uh, to this kid. It's, it's merit to that, you know, when a guy can hang in there and show his team that he's going to be there for all four quarters. It's, it's fighting him, you know, to the very end, and he's not going to deviate from the game plan, win or lose. You know, I think the season was, uh, you know, it was subpar last year, but they got a lot of room for growth. So, you know, in terms of what Kyler has, has been able to do in one year, I just respect that because year one for me, I couldn't have done what he did. I couldn't have played. I wasn't ready. Um, Were there times, because that's that's one of the things, and, and you're going to be able to obviously speak to this much better than I ever could, but yeah. when I watch like, a younger guy, I'll go, okay, third and seven, does he understand what the hell's going on out there or is he totally yeah. lost? And you sometimes, yeah. I think if you just watch enough, you can be like, I don't know that I really trust this guy. And then more often than not, the guys you start to buy into, you're like, like Russell Wilson is my favorite on that down a distance because I feel right. like no matter what, right. he's going to be able to solve this. How quickly can you see someone, it doesn't mean they're necessarily bad, but at that point, they're still lost as a young quarterback. How quickly can you see that? You can see it early because what coaches do, uh, majority of the time, they put us through situational football. So we have periods that's predicated to first and 10, um, second and long. We have a, a third down period. We have a red zone period. And we have a uh, two minute. So you, you get to see the quarterbacks perform in all these situations, whether you're the number one, the number two, or the number three. And when you're the number one, you watch the number two run the – the two minute drill, and you're like, okay, he gets it. He knows what he's doing. He knows the signals. He knows the audibles. He knows the checks. He knows the defense. And boom, 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 they move down the field. So when you put in those situations, you can find out if a young quarterback can handle, you know, these situations in particular. You know, so we'll watch him, you know, continuously in third down. And coaches are even log your percentages and how well you do. So you get a good glimpse of what a guy can handle. Uh, and, and various concepts that might fit the mold when he's trying to run a two-minute drill or third-down situations. I always felt like that Green Bay win for you in your first playoff game maybe made all of us think, oh, my God, he, like this is going to be an incredible run here. You. Did, did that – well, yeah, tell me about that because after, you know, some of the stuff you just talked about, maybe not being yeah. ready – 
What did that game do for you and then kind of where you thought you were going to be as a franchise guy? You know what, man? That game was a gift and a curse for me. Um, accomplished so much in year two, and i never forget this on the sideline, Arthur Blank coming to me saying, you accomplished all this and you're only 22 years old. And I looked at him and I was like, it's just so much more to come. And, you know, I felt like it was so easy to get to that point that I could always get back to, you know, divisional rounds, to um, the NFC Championship, which came two years later. Uh, it was so easy getting there, but still a hard road travel. You know, I just felt like the ceiling was very high, man. So, you know, I got spoiled early. Um, I expected the playoffs every year. And um, the years that we didn't make it, it was a lot of heartbreak, man. But um, to be able to go in and into Lambeau, defeat uh, Brent Favre, who I idolized that as a young man, uh, was was a remarkable feeling. The way you describe that as a gift and curse, I, I think is a perfect way because you're thinking, all right, at this age, to go into Lambeau, this doesn't happen. Um, and, and to beat that team, and then you lose to Philly after that, I, I know you've mentioned it in different interviews where you kind of felt like, look, I'm so talented, I'll figure it out. Are yeah. there are there still moments of regret where you're like, you know, I just wish, and I have moments about stuff that wasn't even as, nor like not even close to being as cool as the NFL, but just moments yeah. as you get older where you like, man, I wish there was some sort of time machine where I could have had a different mindset about it. Yeah, you know what, in years, uh, years five, years six, um, where... You know, I thought I had all the answers and, you know, you learn a new offense in one year, you make the NFC championship game and then you, you feel like in year uh, year two of that offense, you got all the answers. So, yeah, you, you don't work as hard. Um, you don't pay attention to detail because you're like, coach, if we just do the same things that we did last year, I'm going to put us in that same position. I'll make the same decisions. I'll make the same reason and be quick and fluent in doing it. Um, and, and the next year, defense has changed. You know, so you coach call the same play. He's doing what you ask him to do. We call the same play, and then you get a different defense. Oh, so now you didn't expect that. So now it's a different result, and it might be, you know, a, you know, a, a six-yard pass in a flat on third down when you needed eight as opposed to a 12-yard game that you got the year before on the same play. And you're like, you know, damn, I made that decision because I had to. It was the right thing to do within the system. And, you know, always trying to put the harness on running the football and, trying to preserve myself. I was always getting those whispers and I, I needed to grow as a, as a passer. So it was a lot of things that I was dealing with that I wish I wouldn't have focused on as much and just played my game, but it was a part of it. And it was a learning experience. And once I got to Philadelphia, um, I kind of was able to package everything together. Yeah. That's really what they, that the second year, because the first year they didn't, they didn't use you a ton, but I met you back right. in 2011 we did Sports Nation together for the Madden yep. release deal. It was you, me, Beetle, who I went back and watched the footage. She has a boot Shelby. on her foot. Yeah, yeah, she had a broken foot. She was injured. <laughs> yep. I'm wearing some gold Asics, which I don't know what the <laughs> fuck I was doing with those on. Uh, but I'll admit, like, look, I'd never met you. You know, you, you know, you everything you'd gone through, you're in prison for what, 17 months. Yeah. And I was kind of thinking, like, all right, what's he gonna, what's this guy gonna be like? And we had a couple moments where it was off camera and off the commercial. And I just felt like, you yeah. know, we were getting along a little bit and I was like, Hey, so just, I'd love to talk a little bit about that experience and how that transition to the second part of your career, because you were originally in Virginia and then you transferred to Leavenworth to go through a program that you were later like denied. How scared were you when you first got to Leavenworth thinking that maybe they totally tricked you when you were going maximum security and that this was going to be even worse oh. than you thought? Oh man. Stories untold. You know, I, I traveled and fill from in. Virginia. Fill it in, I tra however yeah, you want. I traveled yeah. from Virginia to to Kansas. You know, private plane. You know, and, you know, we in the clouds, and I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a smooth transition. And you know, I know where I'm going. I'm going to a camp, and, and I didn't get approved for a, a, a drug program that would have knocked off like seven to eight months of, of my sentence. So I'm like, okay, <clears throat> I'm going here you know, to complete this program. And this is the only reason that I'm going to Kansas. Other than that, I could do my, my time in Virginia. To be close to your family, and, right? Yeah, to be close yeah. to my family. But, you know, of course, they don't look at it like that. It's really not about you and what you want. But when we first pulled up, we pulled up to Leavenworth. Leavenworth, the 
big prison, the penitentiary level worth. And I'm like, no, this ain't where I'm supposed to be. Like, they done tricked me again. First of all, they told me I was coming here for a drug program. And then, you know, halfway in the trip, I'm told that I get denied. And then we pull up to this, like, just big, scary looking place. And I'm like, yo, I'm, that's not for me. I'm not that, I'm not that guy. You know, I might have, you know, had some slip ups and things haven't gone my way, but, you know, I'm not about to do, you know, my next 18 months, you know, in there, you know, and, you know, luckily for me, you know, God looked at me and was like, yo, you, you're not going there. You go, you're going uh, to the next building over. And, you know, that was a big relief for me because, um, you know, it was a different mindset I was going to have to have going in there. I, I've heard stories about it and people heard it and they like, oh, that's, that's a real place. That's a facility that, you know, if you walk in there, man, you got to walk in there as a grown man, you know, and, you know, that wasn't my life, man. I was a football player. I had ambitions and of, of becoming a NFL quarterback as a kid. And, you know, well, not as a kid because I didn't know what position I was going to play. That's another story untold. I just happened to play quarterback. Um, but it, it worked out for me. Nevertheless, I was just in the wrong situation and I wasn't supposed to be there, man. Um, well, rightfully so, I was supposed to be there. But, you know, just in general, it, it just wasn't... Um, in my destiny, in my destiny. And I don't know how, you know, my life got sidetracked, but it did. And, but it worked out for the best. You know, I, I never look at that as, um, you know, an experience that I didn't learn from, you know, a mistake that I didn't, um, you know, figure out, you know, why I made the mistake and, and how I moved, was able to move forward from it. You're Mike Victor going into prison. And you, are you thinking like, Hey, look, like these guys are probably, like fans or are you going, no, somebody's definitely <laughs> going to fuck with me. Like what no. happens? Yeah. My, my first day, well, when I got there that day, I walked in at lunchtime and I'm like, damn, this is a bad time to be walking in. So, you know, it's segregated when you walk in, it's blacks on one side and it's the whites on the other side. And the black side was full. It was no seats. It was nowhere for me to sit. So I went and sat on the white side. Look, I'm diverse. I can fit in. You know, I'm not worried about, <laughs> I ain't worried about nobody. Like from me, you know, but I, you know, I hear all these whispers. I see everybody looking, you know, they're sizing me up. You know, I'm, you know, my diet wasn't right. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know, I'm six feet, probably like 198 at the time. You know, the stress it got to me, you know, it was wearing on me. And, um, you know, I went and sat, you know, on the side with the whites, man. And I, I didn't like the food. I got up and I walked out and went to my counselor's office, but, Yo, it was real nerve wracking. It, it was work nerve wracking, and you know, certainly one of those moments when I think back, I, I'm proud of because you know I walked in with my head up high, <clears throat> and um, I, I think you know I showed some form of confidence because from that point on, you know, it was like uh, you know, guys just gravitated to me. You know, it was there to help me. You know, we was all there to to, to get out of there, and um. You know, nobody thought about harming anyone or anything like that, man. It was just about doing your time and, and, and getting back to civilization. I have two more questions on it, so I don't want to blame it. But you did play sports there, right? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. We uh, we had the basketball squad. We had the basketball league. We won the championship. You know, okay, but um, there was an al- there was almost an altercation with you because a guy yeah, accused yeah. you of paying off the refs. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had an altercation with a guy from uh, St. Louis. And, um, yeah, man, so, you know, I told this story before. It's not a story untold. Like, he, he, he accused me of cheating. I'm like, bro, like, oh, we, come on, man, we're playing a prison basketball game. Like, it, it's not that serious. Like, it's serious to you because we got some fans and we got people in here. You know, I got a little fan base. You know, I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm rocking out. You, you know, I, I banged the last game and everything. You know, so, I'm, man, and I'm, I was consistent. Consistent. Nobody could beat us. And... We won the championship. Well, the game before the championship, you know, it was frustration started to set in with other teams. And this guy was like, you know, you paid the ref. You paid the ref off. I'm like, bro, you talking crazy, man. Go back to your bunk. He like, yo, nah, fuck you. I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, I said it. Like, fuck you. You know, I'm like, damn, bro, fuck me? Like, over a basketball game? He's just like, man, I said, well, look. You know, some words was exchanged, and I was like, look, man, you know, I'm going to show you. Like, I'm going to show you that I, I ain't the one. You know, I'm here to, you know, everybody know I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm getting along with everybody. 
But he just took it there, you know, and, and I was willing to take it there in that moment. And I just felt real disrespected amongst my my peers and, and people in there that I had respect for and had respect for me. And I just wasn't going to let it go down like that. And that was the only altercation I had. And it would come through sports and not even the sport that, you know, I was. So football, like, nobody messed with you is what you're to. telling me. What, we what played, were the we football played one, games look, like? We played one football game. Okay. All right. I remember you telling me this. And, and, and the fields was like this. Just up like, and down, purely. like yeah, like, like yo. I mean, if you're running deep, you might step in the pothole. I think I sent the dude deep, and he ran, he flew in the pothole. But we did play one game, and um, like it gave guys a chance to see me throw the football and like how easy it was. You know, I'm just like throwing the football, and you know, a guy running ten yards and cutting across the middle is like I can do that with my eyes closed. But you know, to the average guy, he can't do it. You know, he's he probably throwing with crazy throwing motion and probably looking like one of my daughters trying to throw the football. But they was just amazed. I remember one of my my friends coming up to me afterwards and was like, bro, I see why you played in the pros. And I'm like, bro, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, so, you know, wait till I get out. So that was like my motivation and my way of showing them, like, you know, I still got it. And that was without throwing a football in like 11 months. How annoying did it get, though, when you guys would sit around and watch and then they would try to argue with you? Because that's like my favorite thing about sports. It doesn't that matter who you part. are. They were just telling that you you were wrong part. about players. So, yeah, because, you know, you got guys in there with so many different personalities. Some guys, sports guys. Some guys, music guys. Some guys just like to sit and watch the TV and watch the latest gossip. They, You know, it's whatever. You know, the latest reality TV show. You know, a bunch of different personalities. But you got guys in there who think they can be sports broadcasters too and think they know everything about the game. Football, basketball, baseball. And the hardest thing on Sundays, and I used to just try to keep my mouth shut because I tried to pay attention to detail and what was going on um, and, and follow the game. It was guys thinking they knew why a guy um, didn't get the first down, you know, when he was two yards short or why a coach made a certain call you know, he might have ran the ball on third and five, but he ran a draw. Like, draws work. They trick you. You know, they, that's how you trick the opposition. You trick the defense with that, you know. And that's how I got to explain to them. And I got tired of explaining because these guys think they was they thought they was know-it-alls, and I hated it. I started watching football by myself. Yeah, I don't blame you on, on that TV. one. So I'm on TV. You're about to get out, and we know that, while you're still in and I didn't know what your expectations were if Atlanta like look I was not surprised Atlanta moved on from you yeah but they take Matt Ryan and it feels official what was that like and how did that impact your drive to return once you knew you were going to get out yeah um a lot of people wasn't surprised I was surprised you were um, but I wasn't Why? surprised because I, I was just like, man, we're going to work this out. We're going to stick it out. Did Arthur, did you know? the owner of the Falcons tell you you're going to work it out? Because that was always. No, the... he never told me verbally. Uh, he never said verbally. That but we is that the work sense out. you got? Or why would you think <clears throat> that? It, a lot of people within the organization came okay. to visit. They stuck by me. They was they was there uh, communication wise, you know, when I was at my lowest moments and just needed people to talk to, needed confirmation on. Um, you know, my security around the league and if I'll be able to come back and play. And I was leaning on people within that organization. Um, a guy named Kevin Winston, who's a great friend of mine to this day. Um, he was a great confidant. Um, he was a friend. Uh, he was there for me when I needed him. And, and he never told me that, you know, it wasn't going to happen with them drafting somebody else. I just believed in, in the organization and the relationship that we had built. but. When I think about that relationship, I didn't take advantage of the things that I was supposed to take advantage of, the opportunities that was there, my relationship with Arthur. And, you know, when they drafted Matt, I had to take it with a grain of salt. You know, um, unfortunately for me, that was the same day my grandmother passed away. So that added fuel to the fire and it made me more angry. Um, but that night, you know, a guy in prison, he pulled me to the side and he told me, like, look, man, you are here. You can't control what's going on out there in the world, and you have to be realistic about the situations that you're facing and what people have to do. You know, it's it's about monetary. You know, it has nothing to do with you. And, you know, I've seen that steamroll as time went on. Like, look, it was, you know, it was the right thing for the Falcons to do at the time. You know, they got their franchise quarterback who's still there to this day. 
which says that they made the right decision. And I appreciate that part more than anything because if it was a guy that would have just came in and he would have played three or four years and out, then I would have been trying to get back to Atlanta, you know, after a couple of years in Philly because I would have felt that there was uh, still a, a, a whole a void left, you know, in that city, which I still feel is there to this day, man, because of my actions. Do you feel it sometimes when somebody looks at you and doesn't know you and hates you? You know what? That doesn't happen. <laughs> Honestly, like, if it does, then they keep their distance, which I respect. You know, I respect my space. You know, give me give me 50 feet. You know, I, yeah. I'll take it. You know what I mean? Give me 50 feet. Uh, I mean, and, and, and stay in your own space and, you know, you contain that space. I, I, I'll, I'll contain mine. So, you know, I think the biggest thing, man, is from what I went through, and yes, it was um, a lot of hatred that came through, um, you know, what I, I got involved in. But I think over time, people started to see, like, you know, he's really not as barbaric as they might portray him out to be. You know, he is, um, you know, a, a person who's empathetic, who understands what he did and the mistake that he did make and is trying to, you know, make amends to it. And that's all I could do. You know, um, I set goals when I was in prison to help more animals than I hurt and came back and was able to get three laws passed and, you know, work with the Humane Society and various organizations and, and be a part of multiple campaigns. And it was cool. It was fun. It was everything that I set out to do. And um, I thank God for the people who was in my corner for giving me those opportunities to work with those special interest groups and, uh, you know, make my mark in society, you know, for, for, for a different cause. What was the timeline of the Eagles and, and you going there? Because I think some people looked at the quarterback room and they're going, wait, what? Where's yeah. the need here? Was there ever a chance? Right. I don't know if you share. Was there ever a chance you were actually going to go somewhere else other than Philadelphia? Well, I thought it was a chance. Um, talking to my agent at the time, Joe Siegel, I'm looking at rosters around the league and I'm seeing Cincinnati. Carson Palmer was about to be jettisoned out of there. Um, Buffalo head Trent Edwards at the time. And I'm like, you know, Trent is my guy. That's a good friend of mine to this day. We was in Philly together. I'm like, <laughs> I, I noticed that you were about Trent to go. Out. <laughs> All right, I, I think that's I fair. Trent, huh? I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's my boy, and I got a lot of respect for him. Shout out to Trent. Um, it's a cool dude, man. Um, but yeah, I was just looking at teams around the league and like, yo, I can get that spot, I can get that spot. And you know, when Philadelphia came calling and I'm looking at the roster, I'm like, you got Donovan, Kevin Cobb, Kevin was a second round pick. I'm like, what's the need for me? And then it started to sink in that this would be a place where I can be the number three and I can get my legs back under me. You know what I realized that I wasn't ready? My first practice. Coach was like, I'm going to call a quarterback draw. Give it everything you got. Man, I took the snap and I went through that B gap and I slid off to the right. And I'm talking like four linebackers just came in. It was three linebackers on the field. I thought it was four. All three of them just came and just tapped me. At the same time, and I couldn't get away. And usually, I could dip my shoulder and 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 just a, with a burst of speed get away from. Me. It just wasn't the case. My legs wasn't there. So the best thing for me was what, um, you know, my my guys, you know, Andy and and you know Harry Roseman knew what was best for me, Marty Morningway, and that was to you know not start the season, you know, um, and not start out as even the number two. You know, not start for another team, you know, be a backup, you know, learn the game, learn what we're doing now because the game has evolved two years, you know, you're elder and, you know, really try to get your legs back up under you and, and get that, whatever you had left, get that back. Yeah. And I, I'd have to think, I mean, I know there's some numbers we could look at, especially with the rushing totals, but 2010 has to be the most in control you felt at the yeah. position, right? Yeah, um, Andy just made the game so much easier for me. And, and all I ever wanted to do when I was in Atlanta, uh, when I was running the West Coast system, was throw the football more. Um, I seen how Donovan threw the ball around uh, in Philadelphia. And, you know, I was envious of that. I, I wanted to throw the ball at least 30 to 35 times a game, not, you know, 20 to 24 times a game. 
and have more rushing yards than I had passing yards. And like, how am I ever going to grow as, as a passer? And, uh, you know, some of my coaches had conversations um, with me about the reason that we didn't throw the ball as much. And I'm like, look, I understand the concepts. I know the game. I feel like I'm competent enough to run an offense and, you know, take advantage of everything that I, I got to give, you know, while I'm 29, 30 years old at the time. And, uh, you know, Andy was excited about that. He thought I picked up things very quickly. He thought I had the vision to run the offense, and he's seen it. And as I was growing in the backup role, I was starting to look more and more like a starter. And it was just natural. You know, I just – I was a starter for six years, and I just felt that way, and I, I represented myself that way when I stepped on the field. And, and it was evident. You know, I, I was a natural leader. Guys gravitated to me, and I was – you know, five or six years older than Kevin. So when he went down, it was easy for them to, you know, put me in a position. I always kind of liked Kevin and uh, my boy Van Pelt oh, always made fun of, of me, favorites. but he yeah. just couldn't stay healthy. I actually think yep. had he not had the concussion issues, he would have been able to play, but um, it still, it still worked healthy, out for though. you. You know, yeah, he made a great living. Kevin, and, and he won games that we needed that year in 2010. When I got hurt, he went in and won like like two games. He went two and one and it was, it was much needed. His contract situation is one of the most absurd in NFL history Bizarre. when you when you dig through it. I, I yeah. hope he's somewhere outside never answering a phone by a pool. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, let me do a couple rapid fire questions and then we'll uh, we'll bounce here. Okay, first one, better runner, you or Lamar? Me. No, I don't have a follow up really. You want me that. to elaborate? <laughs> yes, please. Well, you know, I mean, look, I, I take no credit away from from Lamar, um, but you know, he still has a long way to go. But when you look at my highlights, like, it's insane. It's sick. They, they like, something like you'll never see before. And um, I think because I was the first to do it, that'll always be in the front of people's minds. Um, and, and Lamar's going to give us more highlights, more and more. So if you ask me this five years from now, I might give you a different answer. I love, uh, look, when, when, you're at your level, and and you just don't want to give it to somebody else. I don't. I don't think any. Like I hate fake humble. Yeah, I can't get that up. I I'd rather. Up. I'd rather arrogant than fake humble. And I don't think yeah, it's being yeah, arrogant. Yeah, when yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Although I'd I'd say Lamar has this one step in very close space that's oh, like at years. the goal line, just one step outside, and then cuts it inside. That is, it's see. different than. Um, I'm not saying it. It's just it's a different <laughs> thing that he would do. And, and he's an amazing runner, but I played running back for two years when I was nine and 10 years old. And uh, that's why I learned to use my vision, you know, in, in, in terms of, um, you know, not trying to be, you know, super athletic all the time, you know, let my eyes guide me. And then when I started to play quarterback, I just did the same thing. I let my eyes guide me, you know, in the passing game and in the run game. But it was one thing that I was, I've loved to take him away from Lamar's game and implement it into my game is the touch on his passes. Like he, he throws one of the softest balls. Um, and, and when he's throwing it to the tight ends, he makes it so catchable. Um, you know, everything for me was bullets and rockets. And, you know, sometimes I couldn't put the host on it. And uh, it was nerve wracking at the time. Okay. So off of that, arm strength. So it's not necessarily the most catchable ball, but do you think there's anybody that has better arm strength than you at your peak? in the league today? Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Patrick's arm strength is is crazy. And, and what I respect about what he can do is that he can put the host on it. Like, he can give you the touch ball. He can give you the sidearm ball. He can give you the speed ball. And that's not an easy thing to do, especially from a guy who makes the game look so easy. Who do you wish you could play for right now? Which offense? the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens offense is suited to run the football downhill. Um, and it's hard to stop a team when they can run the ball that effectively. And then they got a quarterback who can run the ball better than some of the running backs. You know, much respect to Mark Ingram. Shout out to Mark. Um, but, you know, Lamar's a running back in his own right. So you got basically three guys that you can have in the backfield that can run the football. Two guys that's like running backs. And, you know, it ties the defense out more than anything. And, and that's why they're going to be so good for so long. Um, as long as they can continue to 
excel in the run game, the run blocking, you know, they'll be, you know, one of the top tier teams in the league every year for the next five or six years. Man, I've um, had had fun watching you in the, the next chapters of your life. And we have a lot of mutual friends. And I know you enjoy doing the show on Fox with, with a bunch of them. And hopefully we can yeah. do this again. You were terrific. No doubt. So I appreciate no you doubt. sharing Let's the time with it. us. Uh, anytime, bro.